Salamat Malam from New Zealand. I hope you're all doing well. Today's episode of the news that was in Bali this week, I'm going to discuss a few things. I'm going to go over last week's video for, to start off with and do a bit of a recap on all the feedback I got. It's an incredible amount of feedback and some interesting feedback as well. I'm also going to talk about this um, additional restrictions and checkpoints and lockdown that they're doing in Denpasar. And also the news article that came out this week, and I'm sure I read it in a British newspaper, but it came from um, the Indonesian government that Bali may be open for business, for tourism business, as late as October. The implications of that announcement, and um, so we're going to discuss that. We're also going to discuss the beaches, and the there's been petitions to try and get these beaches opened. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about a beach that you can still get to and still walk on in um, the Kuta area. And uh, we'll have a look at also what's happening with um, the visa extensions for foreigners and all the latest statistics and uh, why Bali is doing so well. So, Selma Malam from New Zealand. just thought I'd start off with a uh, recap of last week's video. In last week's video, talking about the news in Bali, I was posing the question, is Bali immune or not? That was a little bit tongue-in-cheek because I know Bali's not immune. But what I did derive from the statistics is that Bali has already had the infection and already has herd immunity. And I base that on the fact that the amount of visitors, 6,800 visitors from Wuhan, just between December and January. Anyway, I got a lot of feedback. Now, obviously, um, my posts are all in English, so most of the feedback is coming from expats living in Bali. And numerous of my friends who live over there, and some that have just been watching the video and commenting online or commenting on Facebook, numerous of them said that uh, they had fevers, head colds, coughs, shortness of breath even, not everybody but some, and uh, back in January, and that it struck their whole families and their whole communities, which kind of backs up. I know that's purely anecdotal, and it's all just from a few comments, but it does back up my theory that Bali already has herd immunity. It's got a younger population than most countries, so... As we all know, younger people can fight it off a lot better than older people. So that's been interesting. Um, I even look at other places that have done quite well. Not as well as Bali, but you know, places like Phuket and Thailand. Also the number one tourist spot for the Chinese travellers. And uh, again, they've had a lot more positive tests. And they've also... But they've only had two deaths. But based on the population, it's only a tenth of the population of Bali. So that would equate to 20 deaths. But um, the difference there, though, is that um, Thailand didn't put the um, airline restrictions on as quick as Bali did, as quick as Indonesia did. So they were a bit behind the eight ball. But it's interesting to look at, you know, where these Chinese went and they're getting very few cases now. The statistics for now for Bali are just incredibly positive. Only 346 positive cases so far. Only four dead. Hasn't been a death for ages now. Of the 346 positive, 243 have recovered. That's a huge percentage. And um, yesterday, I think there was only three new positive cases and 11 recovered. So we keep this going. We'll be just like New Zealand, where we were, we, we were getting days and days and days in a row of zero positives. And uh, now we're up to 95% or 96% recovered. So it's all good news, good news for Bali. But what strikes me as really odd is why are the authorities trying to put more lockdown measures in and getting stricter just when the figures seem to be going really well? Why are they going to get uh, more restrictions in place? And I was looking at that business of, um, I can't remember the initials for it, but they were going to put sort of 12 key checkpoints around Denpasar. And then those checkpoints, there'd be 
uh, checking everybody for temperatures, seeing where they is their travel essential, where they were going, all that sort of stuff. The sort of stuff that all the villages have been doing. I can understand the measurement, but what a catastrophe. They've had to close down most of them already because the traffic around Emberside, it was just, you can't stop the traffic and try and do this sort of uh, questioning with that amount of traffic. So already today I've seen posts of queues, um, roads just completely full to the brim with cars and scooters, and uh, the police have just had to abandon, I think, about five or six of the uh, checkpoints. So I think that's going to be a bit of a waste of time. But it really strikes me as odd that they're doing that. Just carry on what you're doing. Things are going really, really well. Then I hear in the news, and I read online somewhere, that the officials are now talking about possible, possibly um, opening the borders up to tourists in October. October is still four and a half months away. And I just find that unfathomable um i think the first thing you've got to do is can obviously you need uh once the tourist season opens then um um indonesians from other islands will come back to work to actually put a date on of october 2020 before allowing tourists back in that's just going to cripple the economy and i really really feel for all my balinese friends over there how on earth they're going to survive it's not going to be easy just trying to survive on the local market and the expat market. So very concerned about that. Noticed also too, you know, already crime seems to be on the increase. There seems to be a lot more um, burglaries. I know of an um, Australian-owned bar somewhere that got robbed. Uh, he's been closed, been shut down, hasn't been open. But they got robbed and I know uh, quite a few homes have been broken into and... Um, there are friends of mine over there who run a um, um, sort of a steel fence, steel gate sort of business, and they seem to be really, really, he was telling me they're really, really busy at the moment, putting their steel shutters on and stuff like that. So that's a worry, but it's understandable. Every country in the world, when, when people are in poverty, when they've got families to feed, they'll do whatever it takes to feed those families. So that's a little bit of a worry, and... Um, again, just makes me sort of ponder that question as, as to why they've come and announced this date of October to open the borders again. That doesn't offer much hope. If I was the uh, governor of Bali or, or politician in Jakarta, I would be saying we're going to try and get uh, the business going and the tourist, tourism going as fast as possible and not put uh, such an extended date on it. That's just going to make people very, very upset. I see um, foreigners have been, uh, they can get now visa extensions, stay, you know, stay, what do they call it, a stay, emergency stay permit, they call it, and they're granted automatically, and uh, they're free. I couldn't believe that. That's really um, going to take some of the pressure off some of the expats living there and some of the people who just want to stay there because they can't get home. Um, it'll be very without the help of overseas governments, nobody can get home at the moment on commercial flights. It's just uh, nigh on impossible. And uh, I was looking at my local airport, Auckland Airport, not hugely busy airport, but they would have 50, 60, 70 international flights a day. They're averaging two to three. So, you know, things. Um, Things are definitely, and, in, and even those ones, you know, mostly to likes of Australia, where it's Australians repatriating to go home, and of course, once they go home, they've got to sit in 14 days quarantine. So, um, yeah, good news that uh, Bali, uh, the Indonesian government has done the uh, ex emergency stay permits granted automatically, uh, because the the fines for overstaying are around about 100 US dollars a day, so that's going to be a bit bad. Another thing that's really unusual and a little bit strange is the the fact that Bali has closed all the beaches. You know, uh, it's times like this where beaches are actually therapeutic, good for the mind, good to have the um, the salt water on the skin, good to be walking barefoot in the sand. And uh, I find that very unusual. You know, one thing about New Zealand and Australia, they encourage people if, who lived near the beach, they could just walk there to walk as much as they like for exercise on the beach. 
And I did notice that you came, if you go down to um, Jalankartika Plaza and through the Discovery Mall and that sort of area, you can still access that part of the beach down there. And I've seen videos of plenty of people walking and exercising on the beach in that area. Uh, guys fishing, find their kites, um, expats just going for a walk, walking the dogs. So you can still get to it. There are beaches around, and I know some of the beaches in the north are, are open. But, um, yeah, I find it odd that um, such a beautiful big beach that stretches all the way from the two bands through Kuda, Legian and Seminyak, why they can't just uh, allow... Even if they just put someone on the gate and just allow certain numbers on the beach, I don't know why they um, force everyone to stay away from the beach. It's just really, really unusual. And uh, everyone knows that uh, how therapeutic beaches are. Good for the mind, good for the soul. Good for the vitamin D as well, because you're getting that sun. <laughs> but anyway, so that's just a few thoughts from Mr. Steve. I hope you're all well. Thanks for all the wonderful feedback you gave to my video last week. Seems like a hell of a lot of you are in, in agreement with my um, suggestion, and I, I presume a lot of you have already discussed this already, that um, the fact that 6,800 uh, visitors from Wuhan, the epicentre of this virus, actually visited Bali uh, between December and January, it would suggest that even even if only one or two had the uh, virus, that um, it would have spread. So my fingers are crossed that that theory is right and that uh, there is already good herd immunity building up in Bali. And like I said last week, you know, I know this is a big ask, but um, I know it would be great if the authorities could... Uh, and, and they're really hard to get, even the UK struggled to get them, and that is to get some antibody tests, because once you've had the disease your body creates these antibodies naturally so it'd be great to test for those see what percentage do a sample if we could test about a thousand people get a sample of about a thousand and just see what percentage of those have already had the virus and are now carrying the antibodies so that's uh, mr steve for this week that's the news that was in bali this week uh, a lot more have been happening um i'll talk about that later see you next week